And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. How you doing? Today, we're taking a look at another Level 99 game, which uses the same characters and all the rest of their games. That's right. Called Cell Swords. You know, for the life of me, I don't really know what the theme of this game is. I'm not sure. You oh, I, oh, I know. You're mercenaries. And so the people can switch sides very easily. Yes, that's but you, what it's all about. You're only a mercenary while in grid formation. <laughs> okay, so this game is essentially you're going to be putting down characters. Well, there's drafting, then there's placing characters, and then there's flipping characters over. A lot of flipping involved in this placing game. Placing and attacking and flipping guys to work for you. You know what? Let me just show you. At the beginning of the game, you're going to put Asgard here. This is the starting tile. This is going to be part of a grid. And then you're going to, from 50 different cards, you're going to deal 12 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you'll place them in the middle. And then players are going to take turns looking at these cards and drafting them into their hand until each player has six cards. You notice that each card has a blue side and a red side. One side, one player will be blue. The other is going to be red. Then, starting with the first player, they're going to place a tile next to um, the starting one. And then after that, players will place their tiles next to any tile that's already in play. Now, when you place a tile next to one that's already in play, um, you will play, basically play it and then see what happens. Now, normally this is what would happen. We're going to compare the two numbers that are next to each other. So here the captain and alchemist, a three beats a two. So that would normally flip the alchemist. However, the alchemist says it flips on equal numbers only. So I can say, oh, well, I could put this one here or I could put that one here, but he'll, he'll beat me. So that's not very good. So maybe I'll have to play somebody who has a two, or I can just play my captain up here. Now the captain is plus one to all numbers for each adjacent ally tile. So then my opponent will play this one here. This is a ranger, and so that has a six. However, the ranger is minus one for each adjacent tile. All those numbers are minus one. Well, he has two adjacent tiles. So that makes him a four, but a four still beats a two. So now he flips the captain over and the captain is now on the blue side. So then I sit here and I say, ah, I'm gonna play the barbarian. He can only flip one tile. Sometimes when you place a guy, you can flip multiple tiles, but this allows me to flip this ranger over. So now the ranger's on my side. And then the next person here, uh, this says you can rotate adjacent tiles in any direction. So he decides to rotate this one which allows him to beat the Barbarian because three beats one. And this is gonna go back and forth as players play different tiles. Now there is a limit of five. Once the grid uh, row or column reaches five, then it cannot go any farther in either direction. And so this would be the extent of the grid if these tiles were placed like this. At the end of a round, when the players have placed these 12 tiles, you're going to score based on the number of cards in each row and in each column. If you have one of your color in a column, that's worth nothing. But if you have two of a color in a column uh, or row, like for example here, blue would get one point. If you had three, then you would get two points. If you have four, you'll get four points. So blue would get four points for this row. And if you have five, you get seven points. After points have been scored, you're going to deal 12 more cards in a table. Players will draft them just like they did in the first round and place them into the, onto the board. So it's going to completely fill up the grid and then you'll score one more time. Whoever has the higher total sums is the winner. There's also some special terrain tiles that you can play. Uh, but before we go to our thoughts on the game, let's take a look at some of the cards in it. Now remember, there's 50 tiles in the game and I'm not showing you all of them. We're just gonna show you an example of some of them. The knight here, for example, has good numbers on all sides of him. So you can attack from different directions. He has no special ability though. 
the king, Alexian the 37th, has nines all around him. However, after you compare numbers, you flip him automatically. So he'll win against everyone he attacks, but then he flips. He's such a chivalrous guy. Um, the traitor can switch the places of two adjacent tiles. The thief can switch a tile in your hand with one in your opponent's hand. The changeling, all his numbers are question marks. They're the same as one of the tiles that he's next to. Put him next to uh, King Ale Alexian the 37th, and he's a really powerful character. Uh, the commander can choose an opponent's tile. That's the one they have to play next from their hand. The necromancer, all the numbers on the tiles next to them are reduced by one. The beggar has pathetic numbers. However, your opponent loses two points at the end of the round. Of course, that's if they don't flip him and then they control him, then you lose two points. The Valkyrie adjacent tiles give an extra point at the end of the round. Another great tile, as long as you control it at the end of the game. Um, the Fool flips a random number. That's it. The Cadenza, he can't be moved. The Monk, when he's defending against someone placing a tile, he's plus two. Very hard to kill. The Assassin, notice he's a zero, one, two, and then an eight. But he can switch place with an adjacent enemy tile. Borneo can flip any tile. Any tile. But if you do, then your opponent can do the same thing. Uh, the priest cannot be affected by his special abilities. Or Rukyuk here, he compares his numbers with the first two tiles in one direction. So he's basically blowing through two tiles. Probably going to do it with the seven, as long as it works out. And there are quite a few other tiles in the game also. Anyway, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. All right, so what'd you think? I think it's a very neat game. I like it a lot. This is a two-player only game with... Um some interesting drafting. I thought the drafting was very strong in this game, actually. It's very interesting. That part is a standout. Playing the game itself is great, but the drafting lets you do some tricky stuff, you know? Lets you prepare for what's coming and then lets you take that guy you know you're going to need and you got to hang on to him and hang on to him till the opponent finally bites and then you hit him with it. I like that part a lot. I thought the... You know, I was worried at first a little bit that the abstract nature of the whole thing, you know, basically building a 5x5 five five grid might bother me. But I found that to be pleasant. I thought it was interesting that it scored in rows and columns was a good way to do it, you know. And all the powers is really what makes the game. Um, none of them felt too fiddly, you know. There's some there's some we had to reference a couple of times, you know. And, and you still do that no matter how many times you play, I'm sure. But... It flows. It flows well. I think it's very interesting. I did like that they numbered the cards. So it's like, oh, there's number 23. Boom, there's 23. That's what yep. it does. Yep. Yeah, the characters, I really liked how they felt very different. And drafting was really fun because you're sitting here going, oh, I want the assassin because he's that one really powerful attack. But this guy has good attack all around. And this guy just has this really cool special ability. Um, one of the things that I, I enjoyed was the just trying to outthink your opponent. Right. Trying to put a card down, and because so many times you play, you put that card down, and your opponent's like, boom, flip, right. flip, flip, flip. And you're right. like, what? And you could have avoided that because you know what the cards your opponent has. Mm -hmm. It's not secret. Um, and I also like that you're only using 24 out of the 50 cards. Yeah. So every game's going to be very different. I think it's a very cool game that adjusts itself to playing very casually. You can just grab some cards, slap them on the table, or... Since you do know what you know, every card your opponent has, if you do know all the powers, it can be a really heady game. And there's a lot of that spatial play, lots of tactics. You know, you can try to grow the board to five in one specific area so no one can get attacked on the outside of that. Very cool stuff. Yeah, and the game is 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, a short game is not a bad thing. You can play this boom, boom. And each half of the game feels like a game in itself. So if you played two games, you'd feel like you played four. Right. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm going to give this one a... This one, I, I'm really telling you, I like what Level 99 is doing. This one gives me the same feeling as Pixel Tactics, although this is easier than Pixel Tactics. A lot less it text is. on the cards. Right. Um, but it has that same kind of feel, that quick two-player fun game. Uh, except this one's about spatial and the attacking on four sides. It's not new to this game. I've seen the... Attack on all four sides things before. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen flipping and that combined, but there's abstract games and such. What mm -hmm. makes this game stand out is the drafting ahead of time to get the powers. And the special powers themselves, right? And uh, the game's really well made also. You know, it's it comes in a nice little box, fits well in here, and uh, the cards are really well made. I like that a lot. 
So that's Cell Swords. Thumbs up from me. Me too. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.